What is up everyone? We are already at the third episode of this new tutorial series on how to make a VR game in Unity. So far, we've seen how to do the VR setup, listen to an input and make animated ends. And in this video, we will have a look at how to move in VR with continuous movement. By the way, as I talked about in the first video, next episode will be uploaded directly on my Patreon, where we'll use what we already learned to make a small VR game from scratch. Lots of cool things to cover in this video, so without further ado, let's get started. And as always, a big, big shout out to Unity for partnering with me on this tutorial series. Okay, so the first locomotion system that we will cover is continuous movement. It's pretty straightforward. You look at the controller's thumbstick, and move the player in that direction. Now, in my previous tutorial series, this movement was not integrated in the Unity XR toolkit. But, good news, it is now the case. So, we will be able to make it in a matter of a few clicks. So, let me show you. First thing first, we are going to select our XR origin. We can click on Add Component and add a Locomotion System component. As you can see, it needs a reference to the XR origin, so let's drag it inside this component. Now, this Locomotion System is there to receive the movement request we will ask to move the rig. Next, let's add two more components. First, the Continuous Move Provider Action Based. This is the main component that will listen to our input to move. And then, a Character Controller. In this component, we'll have the settings to say how our character should react to an obstacle. For example, the slope limit here will not allow the character to climb over a slope of 45 degrees. And the state of set will tell us the maximum step height the player can cross. Personally, what I like to do is leave everything as it, but reduce a little bit the radius to something like 0.2. This will make sure that we are not blocked by all objects when moving around and make the movement feel more precise. Finally, let's have a look at the Continuous Move Provider Action Base component. We can already drag the Locomotion System component in the system variable. As you can see, we can say inside this component if we can strafe, which means going sideways, and use gravity or not. And here in the gravity application mode, we can say if gravity is computed when we move with attempting to move or all the time with immediately. In my opinion, it is best to set it to immediately to avoid some weird behavior. For example, if you put your player higher than the floor at the start of the game, it will only fall after you press on your thumbstick and not at the beginning. Finally, the next parameter says what is the default forward source, which means if the thumbstick is in forward position, should it move the player according to where he's looking at or to where one of his hands is pointing, or maybe another direction. In my case, I like to simply move the player in the direction he's looking at. It feels just way more natural, so I'm going to drag there the main camera of our XR origin. Finally, the two last parameters are the action that we want to assign to move. We could create some new action like we saw in last episode, but as always, the Unity XR Toolkit comes with some great action made for this purpose. So let's select Use Reference for both. Next, we can click on the little dot next to the variable, and for the left hand move action select, use XRI left hand locomotion move. Same thing for the right hand, we can use XRI right hand locomotion move. Now let's have a look at how these actions are set. We can go back to the input actions list by going to sample XR toolkit or version. So 202 in my case, starter asset. Double click on XRI default input actions. And as you can see, if I select XRI left hand locomotion, we have here the move action is of type vector2, which will cover the two movement axis of the thumbstick. And the binding is set to primary to the axis on the left controller, which is what we want. But if we have a look at the same, but for the right hand, we can see that there are no bindings at all which means that right now we will be able to move only using the left thumbstick. Now, this is by default what is used in a lot of games, so I will leave it like this in my case, but if you want to change this value or add new binding, you know where to look. But enough talking, more playing, let's close these windows and click on play to try our game. As you can see, we have a small issue if we click on play. The player is falling. This is because we have the character control centered at the origin, so he does not know that there is a plane under him to collide. So to fix this, we can simply go to the character controller and set the center wall value to 1. 
Now it will be just above the floor and it will work. There you go guys, as you can see, if I move the thumbstick forward, I move to the direction I'm looking at. So we can already test the two settings we talked about earlier. Because I have enabled trap, I can also move sideways as you can see, and as I have gravity enabled, if I go further than our plane, I am falling, nice. But for now, it is not that easy to move around the scene as I cannot rotate. So let's see how we can do this. We have two ways to rotate in VR. Continuous turn or snap turn. Like the name suggests, continuous turn slowly moves you around, while snap turns directly rotate the whole rig a certain amount of degrees. Now I'm going to enable both and let you test the one you prefer for your own game. So let's first click on add component and add a continuous turn provider action base. Then the same thing, but this time with a snap turn provider action base. As you can see, both needs a locomotion system, so let's drag it for them. We can also assign their actions, so as always, let's click on use reference, and for the left hand, select XRI left hand locomotion slash turn. And this for both continuous and snap turn. Next, we can as always do the same, but this time with the right hand, with the XRI right hand locomotion turn. So these actions are bind to the left and right direction of the thumbsticks and as always you can have a look at them and edit them in the XRI default input action asset. And as you can see now, we also have some simple settings to tweak this component like the speed for continuous or the turning amount for the snap turn. So we can now test both by simply enabling one and disabling the other over there. So let's click on play to try this. First, I'm going to enable continuous and disable snap. And as you can see, it works. I can slowly rotate using my thumbstick. And now if I do the opposite, there it is. I can now snap rotate 45 degrees left or right. This is so cool. Now there is a small issue. I can also rotate with the left thumbstick, which is not what I want because it is already used for the continuous move provider. So let me just leave play mode. And to fix this issue, we could edit the actions, but a simpler fix is actually here to simply uncheck the use reference on the left hand for both the snap and continuous turn and just leave it empty. And there it is guys, so we managed to set up turning for our player. Feel free of course to use the snap or continuous turn, but what's best to do is to actually leave that choice to the player himself like in a menu, for example. And this is something that we will learn to do in a future episode on this series. So in my case, for the rest of this tutorial, I will disable the snap turn and leave the continuous turn like this. And finally, one last thing that we can do with this continuous movement is correctly update the character controller. So let me click on play and select our XR origin to show you the problem. As you can see, the capsule from the character controller does not move with the player, and only stay at the center of the rig even when I walk a little bit. And same goes for the height. If I crouch, it will have the same height as before, which might stop me from passing under some element even if it seems like I can. And hopefully, to fix this, we can use another component made by the Unity XR Toolkit. So let's click on Add Component, and this time add a Character Controller Driver to the XR origin. As you can see, it needs a reference to the locomotion provider, so let's drag our continuous move provider there. Also, it has a min and max value that you can use to claim the height, but in my case, I will simply leave it like this. And just like that, if we click on play, as you can see, it works. Now the capsule is following my height and position when we are moving. And there it is guys, we managed to make continuous movement works in our game. Congratulations! Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. As always, if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. The source code of this product is there on my Patreon where you will be able to find the next episode of this series which will use what we learned to make a VR game from scratch. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye bye!